Last year, we started a new science curriculum called Science in the Beginning by Berean Builders. And I've shared a little bit about it on here in a quick short video of how we were doing lessons. And I've gotten a few questions about it, how it's going. So I thought I would just do a short video to update you on how this went and what we're doing next year. I think the first thing I need to do is confess that science is probably the subject I am not the best at, which is sad because I used to be a science teacher. <laughs> I was a great science teacher, I promise you, but for some reason, it is very hard for me to stay motivated to consistently do science. Maybe you're in the same boat. I, I just, I don't know what it is, but we get most of our science through nature and random experiments that my kids want to do in the kitchen. <laughs> so this was a very slow process. We probably started it in February or March of last year, and I don't think we even did every lesson in here. So uh, that, that's just to start off this video, okay? So don't when, when I talk about it, I don't want you to picture my family sitting together consistently learning beautiful things about science. It was, it was more sporadic than that, okay? <laughs> But we did start out with a good rhythm. Um, if you don't know anything about this, it goes through the timeline of history. So this one in particular is, is uh, days of creation. So it's gonna pick a specific day and it's gonna do lessons based on that. And this whole book goes through all the days of creation. Now, one of the reasons I like it is that the lessons are not that long. I know these are backwards, but you don't really need to see the text. If you look at a lesson, this is where it starts. This is the activity. And then the text that you read is here. And then this is lesson review. Okay. So it's really not that long. We had done apologia before this and those lessons are very long. So this was a nice break from that. So short lessons was a plus. My downside to the lessons is the fact that the text I feel is more, it's meant for the whole family, but I really feel like it's great for maybe eight to 10 and up. A lot of times I would read this and I could just look at my younger ones and I promise you the words were just right over their heads. And I know that I can feel that sometimes and I think that kind of got to me a little bit because when it's over your head, it's not interesting and you really don't care and you don't want to listen. And, and so then it was trying to get them engaged in that. So that is kind of my complaint about the lesson. I, I think it's quality text. I love that he can give you so much in a short amount of time, but when you have little ones, it's harder to connect with them because of that. I and my picture book loving self was seeking out picture books to supplement the material. So there was a period of time, a long period of time, where I would say something like, oh, okay, this lesson is about rocks. I'm not gonna read this. Instead, I'm gonna go and get a picture book from the library about rocks. And we did that for quite some time. It was fantastic. I loved it because this guided me on the books that we needed, but I even have a list, a, a blog post where I share an entire unit's worth of picture books. And I get so many messages about people wanting more picture books, but I'm gonna tell you, I, it, I, I don't have any more and I'm so sorry. And I'll tell you why in a second, but if you, if you, that was really lovely when we supplemented with picture books because I could do the activity and then instead of reading the text that was going over their head, we could read a picture book with it. So if, if that is a comfortable thing for you, if you enjoy doing that, I think maybe this might be a good fit because there is an activity every single day, every single lesson there is something. And a lot of it is stuff that you can do around your house. There are some lessons where there, the entire lesson was based off the activity. So you really have to be careful of which ones you choose to do and not to do. It got to the point where if I didn't have the stuff to do the activity, or if I couldn't find a picture book to talk about what the content was, then we would just skip the lesson and we would move on. 
And that's why I don't have any more picture book lists. So I'm so sorry for those of you that really find that good, but we just skipped the lesson and it, and it was fine. And I don't think that anybody want, so I have a picture book list, but it's incomplete. It's just the ones that we actually did. Um, so as you can see, there was just kind of some holes, but I, I honestly think it's not the fault of the text. It's the fault of me. I'm just not a fan of textbooks. And you can see that you can watch any one of my videos and I'm constantly bringing in picture books to our subjects because that's what we enjoy. It, when we did that with this text, I thoroughly enjoyed that, but it is difficult to seek them out on your own. I mean, you really have to be on it. And I was working on so many other subjects bringing in picture books that that got a little bit exhausting to do it for more than two or three subjects. So overall, I really liked it because if ever we didn't do science for a little bit, which we, that happened often, I knew I would just pull it out and be like, okay, let's just do a lesson. And it wasn't overwhelming. It, and it never felt like, oh, we, we, it's been so long since we've done it. Like it was really easy to just jump right back in. So that was great. And like I said, the activities, you have to make sure that the, he's not gonna refer to it, but some of them you don't always have to do. The last thing I wanna share is the way that we kind of kept record a little bit for this. This is, I think, what my video is on this, but we did little notebook pages. At the end of his lessons, he has this review section where there is some questions. You could definitely just have them do that in a notebook. We more just discussed that. The way my kids kept a notebook is if we did an activity, then I had them draw a picture of the activity and then label it or write about, write something about it. You know, I just kind of challenge them each at their own level, write two sentences about it or tell, give me some words to tell me what that is. Or if they didn't know what to say, I'd pick the bold word in here and say, tell me what that word means. So that's kind of how we did keep a record. And, and that was really easy to do. So we, you didn't need a workbook or fill in the blanks or anything like that. That was something very simple. Unfortunately, we're not gonna be continuing this because we're actually joining a co-op next year and we're going to be following their science choice. You know, would I have continued it? I don't know. Um, I really don't know. <laughs> but, Next year we'll be trying something else and that's just because we're following. So if you see this, I won't be doing this again, but it's not because it was bad. It's because we're just joining um, another group that's doing something different. So if somebody asked me, would you recommend this? I would say yes, but you need to pay attention to those couple of things. Number one, the text and the age of your children. Number two, the activities. When you're successful is when you prepare. So if you start your month or your week or however you plan, look at those science activities, make sure you have the supplies so you're ready to go. Because if you kind of just open up the book and go, I promise you, you're gonna see the directions to those activities and be like, oh, never mind. <laughs> we'll do science another day. I can attest to that, okay? Um, so that is another thing to uh, be aware of. Those are really the only things that are my concern. I mean, other than that, I love the the biblical aspect of it. I love that it's scripture based. That was that brought some really good conversations between me and my kids, between my kids and me. And I I love the length of the lessons. Like I said, if I ever forgot to do science for a while, which I did, then it was just so easy to pick up and keep going. You just kind of have to figure out your style and what you like and what you think would be the best. If you, you know, I'm all about simple. I would say this is simple. I really would because it's the same thing every day. Like a lesson, some review questions, and an activity you can do in your house. And, and there are many that you can do with supplies you probably already have, but there are some that you, you probably would need something else. If I would go on their website and see if they had a kit with all the supplies, they might. If so, that would probably be worth it <laughs> to keep you uh, making sure that you do the stuff. So, okay, I hope that was helpful. I, I wanted it to be quick, but I tend to chat. <laughs> All right, if you have questions, let me know.